Bush Radio. Bush Radio. Bush Radio. Bush, Bush, Bush. Bush Radio. Your Real Talk Radio. Daganan kilon kilo bedanin kom lo mo hum lo 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 di bedama so sanalom lo 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 wa sa benge kaputo lo 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 ya 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 state affairs state affairs with edmond Knowledge is power, and there is power in books. At Odara Books, we sell books and disseminate knowledge. Buy books on www.odarabooks.com. Odara Books, out to stock your library and connect you to a new world of books. State Affairs with Edmond Obilo is live. Raise the question of the Nigerian scene. That was one part of your book I found interesting. Some African countries recognized Biafra, Tanzania, Zambia, Gabon, and Côte d'Ivoire. At that time, you were Nigeria's ambassador to Ethiopia. How were you able to stop other African countries from recognizing Biafra? We were able to stop it because. We were lucky to have Emperor Heselase as chosen by the way itself to be the leader on trying to find, uh, to mediate and see whether one side or the other will accept the result of his mediation. Um, we, were, we were lucky, I said, because the emperor himself had problem. The Ogaden, this is where the ethnic Somalians were. They were fighting for a greater Somalia. And so the Ogaden, which is part of Ethiopia, there was a streaming rebellion on that side against the emperor. Uh, Right in uh, Eritrea. Eritrea was a, a mandated territory of the, of, of the United Nations, uh, formerly ruled by the British, later on by one or two other states, on the basis that the federal system, the, Ethiopia will be governed by the federal system. As soon as Ethiopia got its own independence from the trusteeship mandate, it abrogated that. And so there was a war on, on Eritrea against the Pro. Another part of Ethiopia was also in rebellion against the Pro. The Emperor was also anxious that his, his uh, country should not be divided. So, a, he, Emperor's personality was what held Ethiopia together. Is it that he did not believe the Biafran message of genocide ringing on the international stage at the time? If you read the book, you will see that instead of trying to base the book on uh, the strength of the antagonist. 
I rarely use the personality of the warring partners, Ojuku and Gowan. Gowan. And I said, Ojuku's personality made it more difficult for the OAU to believe him, to accept his position. He was arrogant. He was arrogant as opposed to the rather cool image of Gawan, whom people seem to believe when he says, look, this is what I'm fighting for. I'm not here to kill by France. I am trying to accept, the people to accept Article 3 of the Charter. That's all. Did he use his calm men to deceive the OEU quite a time? Biafrans who have been killed in their numbers. Yes. Because in the book, uh, the emperor even confronted you saying, does Gowon want to finish the Biafrans before he ends the war? Yes, that, that is true. One of my difficulties I said in the book. But I said that, look, we, that one of the weaknesses of, on the side of the, of the government was the use of propaganda as a tool for the war. No doubt about on that side, Ojuku won because he was able to marshal his uh, propaganda completely against the federal government. What he had on the side, the Catholic Church, because most of the people in the East are Catholics. He had on the side the Scandinavian countries. And these are the people that added to my problem as ambassador to Ethiopia at that time. When nobody sought emphasize the fact that when we were trying to get relief to the huh? France, Ojuku refused on many occasions because he said places they want to go are places where he had his setup and he was not going to allow it. You suggested in the book that it was a delay tactics for the Biafrans to prepare to really engage the Nigerian troop militarily. Yes. I still believe it because, look, when we were negotiating, it was then I found out how much the West knew about Nigeria. Emperor Heselase produced a map which was as big as this room. In that map, if you looked at the map, you would see every river in the east. You will see it that if we pass through here and here, relief will go. So that itself was available. And we were able to suggest to Juku, why don't we go this way or that way? We, really, we, we receive resi resistance. So would you want to blame Ojuku for the hunger that persisted in I'm Biafra? I'm not blaming him for anything. I'm not blaming him for anything whatsoever because I have no idea about the extent of the hunger. That is not my problem on the... That's not what I said in the book. I didn't say that he was not telling the truth. Mm. I said that his refusal to allow relief to go added to the problem of Bafra. So... Your description of what happened in Niamey in the in Niami. Yes. The Niami negotiation. Yes. When Ojuku walked in and decided to light a cigarette. Yes. What happened? I said in the book that all the big shots of the East were arranged. From the former Chief Justice of Nigeria, Mbanefu, Okpara, and uh, all, all the people that you thought were the 
the power that be in Biafra were there. And I said, when they were all seated, Ojuku walked in. And he made the mistake of lighting, forgetting that there was earphone, lighting the cigarette, which caused a lot of commotion among top man, uh, the head of state of Niger himself and Ghana to pull off the earphone and this infuriated top man. And I said in the book that it was an occasion where Namdi Azikwe saved Biafra. He got up and pushed Ojuku aside and said, just one sentence, my name is Nabdi Azikwe. I'm the author of Liberia and World Politics. And Topman almost jumped up to clap for him. Everything was calmed. And he said, of course we know Zeke. And uh, discussions continued. I almost lost my job. How? Because I wanted to stand up and clap for Namda Zikwe. Because we are the generation we lived at the time of his highest popularity. He comes to Ibadan and all schools were empty. You all good to listen to him. But Gowan was looking at you. Gowan turned his face and caught me trying to clap. He didn't say anything, no, but I knew that a, it's a warning that I should be very careful. Do you think it was youthful exuberance on the part of Ujuku at the time, or he was just being revolutionary? On that question, the Ebos and the rest of us will have a different attitude. By, by trying to even light his cigarette in such a meeting, was he youthful exuberance? Um, you see, this was said, it depends on who you are. I am a Yoruba man with different ethos, different values. I wouldn't do that. I would not do that in the sense of going and seeing my elders in front of me and do that. Perhaps an Igbo man would think it was nice if you could do that to show that despite everything, the Igbos were still confident, they were still quite sure of, their, of themselves. So nothing wrong with what he was doing. So that's why I said different ethnic groups look at what he did in a different perspective. In 1969, you were also there. Look, it was almost about the last uh, time he appeared. It was almost the last hurrah when he came and made his speech, which lasted for more than two hours, which uh, Enero reacted to. Because the very protocol we adopted, mutually adopted, was that it was not actually, the emperor comes to open the meetings for us and disappears, disappears and leaves the actual discussion to his prime minister. And on that occasion, the protocol was broken. The Nigerian side, Enauro was very upset and insisted that we are no longer going to speak until we are given equal time to respond to whatever Ojuku was saying. And we put the emperor on notice that as far as we are concerned, we are going to leave the, the discussion, the negotiation. If that was the attitude. What did Ojuku say? It's not what he said. Look, it's the fact that he gave his own side of the war. Why the Biafran went to war, which we are all familiar with. I don't know about the emperor, but which 
No, well, they started everything. I started where well, where well, did not the Ojuku and his wife was were upset about it and why well, declared decided to go to the east. Was he harsh on the emperor? No. Don't be harsh on the emperor. Well not harsh on the emperor. He didn't say the emperor was one sided, he did not say anything of the sort. But, just, the, but the emperor supported Nigeria. The emperor <laughs> was mandated by the OU to support that. And Ojuku never at any time said it was wrong for Nigeria emperor to support Nigeria. It was an OAU mandate and all of us accepted it. Why going through your book and I was reading the part where you talked about the Biafran war and how the international community responded. I had this feeling that Ambassador Sanu has a lot to say, but he's refusing to say them in the book. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, <laughs> look, all those things will not be fair in the sense that I was an ambassador representing the country. I was not there to declare my views or to say, uh, to make a judgment on anything. I was there simply to carry out the mandate given to me by the government that I represent. You wrote the book after you have finished serving the country. Some of us feel that you should have told us more about the Biafran struggle at the international stage, which you did not tell us in the book. Why were you very conservative? Look, I don't agree with you. I don't agree with you at all. All this book that you say, 500 pages, I read, wrote it from memory. I, I, I wrote it literally from memory of what I remember of the war. You know, you are not the first to say all this, though. There are people who believe I should write a, a second volume. But I, I say, because they come here and ask me all sorts of questions, as you did. And I said, look, I'm tired. 87 years old is not a joke. I can't start writing any. I've already written 520 pages. And people like you come and tell me that, why didn't you explain this? Why didn't you explain that? I was... A story writer, I have written the best book that any former ambassador has written telling the story of the achievement of Nigeria and the problems they have had over the years. Radio, the home of history.